In this course, we will learn how computers work by studying computer instructions. Specifically, we want to know what happens when some instruction is executed. Take a look at the following simulator. What happens when we click Next? LWCS first adds the values in cell 1 and cell 2, and then stores the result in cell number 3. If we click Next again, LWCS adds the values in cell 2 and cell 3, then stores the result in cell 1. In the ensuing chapters, we will learn the properties that we can apply to predict the computer's behavior before running the simulator. Instruction properties have the following format. If at time t the PC is i, the instruction number i is x, and the value of memory cell m is y, then at time t plus 1, the value of memory cell n is z. The condition describes the computer's current state, and the conclusion describes the state at the next time frame. In other words, if we know which instruction will run next and the current PC and memory values, then we can predict how the memory and the PC will change after LWCS executes the instruction. We don't need to recall any of the states in the past. Notice that if we know the computer state at time t plus 1, then we have all the information to predict the state at time t plus 2. Similarly, we can predict the state at time t plus 3, t plus 4, and so on, assuming no external input such as someone pressing keys on the keyboard or some data arriving from the internet. Remarkably, if we know the computer's current state, we can predict the computer's behavior at any time in the future. The instruction set presented in this course is a simplified subset of the MIPS architecture. Since the 1980s, MIPS processors have been used in personal computers, network devices, and video game consoles such as the Sony PlayStation. Once we understand the different computer instructions, we can use them to write interesting programs, such as the Fibonacci number calculator.